Hi there. Um, in this tutorial, I want to show you how you use your, a graphic calculator to do time lapse photography with a digital SLR over here. So recently, I've been um, playing with some time lapse photography, and um, I I wanted to find a way to control my camera remotely such that it will fire shots at a fixed time interval. And that device is known as an intervalometer. And um, I, I didn't want to spend money to buy a proper intervalometer. But guess what? Believe it or not, a graphic calculator, the, the ones that I use in school, will actually um, function as an intervalometer for my Canon SLR um, when I write a simple program on it. So in this video, I just want to show you how it's done. And it's actually a pretty simple process. So first, the first thing is to get um, all the equipment ready. So the first thing you need to get, of course, is your graphic calculator. This is a TI-84 Plus from Texas. I know the TI-83 would work um, using this method too. And this is just a standard calculator that, that every JC student has in school. And the second thing that you need, of course, is a camera. This is the Canon 500D or the T1i. Um, I know that this method works with all Canon Rebel SLRs, um, but I'm not sure about the, the Nikon SLRs. Um, but from what I've read online, they don't seem to work quite well. The, the thing here to bear in mind is that you need to have the necessary um, connections. So if you were to flip your camera to the side, there's actually this um, a rubber, rubber um, door that you open. And as long as you see this um, 2.5mm audio jack for, for the remote shutter, the shutter release, um, then it should work fine. So you, you, this, this port is very necessary. Um, this is the connection, this is the port they'll be using to connect um, your camera to your calculator. And of course, um, the last um, equipment that you need is um, the connection. So this is ju just a simple audio cable um, but the thing to note that it's a, it is a 2.5 mm audio jack to a 2.5 mm audio jack um, it's slightly smaller than your standard um, headphone jacks so um, I actually got an adapter this is the size of the standard headphone jack so I got an adapter to um, change it to this smaller 2.5 mm ones um, you can get this from your local computer store it's very cheap and I just got two of these um, two of these uh, adapters and if you look at your graphic calculator at the top over here you see this um, IO um, written on it and it's actually also over here a standard 2.5 mm jack so if you connect um, the audio cable from this jack to the one camera over here, that's how you make the connections. And the second step, of course, is to program the calculator. First, you got to switch the GC on, so press the on button, and then go up to the program button over here, which allows you to write a new program, and then scroll to the right two times till you see the new menu, create new, yes, you want to do that, hit enter, and then this screen comes up um, which asks you for your program name so just name this program any name that you like um, to keep things short I'm just going to call this program oops sorry I'm just going to call this program A and to type letters um, if you don't know how to do this is to press the alpha button over here and then um, followed by the corresponding key um, for the letter that you want um, the letters are marked in green so after you name your program, right, hit enter again, and then now this screen comes up where you actually key in your program. So um, I'm going to fast forward this part. I've keyed in the program. Um, it's a simple um, six lines of code. Um, just to let you know, um, I'm not smart enough to, to come up with the code. This code is actually taken um, off a website um, from instructables.com. So I'll give them credit. Um, it's a simple six lines. Um, in order to um, choose the, the 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 functions, you actually press um, the program button over here again, and then this menu comes out. 
um, for uh, which allows you to select all the commands that you need. So again, um, just let you see. I hope you can see this. This is the code that you need. And once this is done, um, you simply um, quit second mode. And then just double check if you hit program button, you can see that the program that you just created should be there. And finally, the third step is to make the connection um, using your audio cable between the calculator and your SLR. Um, remember to insert it at the correct um, port, not the USB one. And over here, the port again is at the top left hand corner. And then once that is done, you need to um, adjust some settings in your camera um, in order to do time lapse photography. So I'll turn my camera on. So first of all, I'll use manual focus um, so that the focus um, within the scene uh, is kept constant um, throughout time. Secondly, I'll use the manual mode. Um, this is so that I can set a constant fixed shutter speed and aperture and ISO value such that my exposure is kept the same um, throughout the entire duration of the time lapse. Um, this is very, very important. And then, of course, I will want to set my um, shooting mode to single shot not the continuous shooting right the single shooting mode and I would want white balance um, to be um, kept constant too so if I'm outside shooting I would select daylight and then um, of course um, you don't want to be shooting at the highest setting because um, that, that would just be overkill so I would use the smallest um, setting on my camera shooting at uh, 3.7 megapixels over here I'll select that and then um, it's also important to ensure that your camera doesn't go to sleep um, and that the sleep um, time is um, is longer than uh, the interval between one shot and I think that's about all that you need to set on your camera and once that is done, oh, also ensure that your batteries are fully charged because um, time-lapse photography drains up battery and so once that is done then you can start your time-lapse um, so after all um, the connections um, have been made and you are ready to go, um, you can start by executing the program, right? Turn on your calculator, press program, and then execute the program A that you've just written, press enter, and then this screen comes up. Um, you need to press enter a second time, and now this screen comes up, and it will ask you A equals to what, and this value of A here, um, is actually the time interval uh, between the successive shots. Um, A is not in seconds, right? Um, so you have to trial and error um, and, and try to input different values of A. Um, but I've been using values ranging from 5,000 to 10,000 and they have been working well for me. Um, of course, the time interval is dependent on how fast your subject changes. So for illustration purposes, I will just um, input a value of 1,000 and if uh, ensure that my camera is turned on everything is good to go and then once I'm happy I just press enter and just wait for the camera to start snapping away and so you can see that this is really a very neat way um, to do time-lapse video um, you can just sit back and relax and enjoy and you don't need to manually trigger each shot so once you're satisfied once you're done with the time-lapse in order to stop the process, just press the on button and hold until this screen comes up and then press quit to uh, enter to quit the program. And this should be all. Um, I'm interested to know if this method works with the Nikon cameras as well. Um, I hope that you, that you will have great fun with time-lapse photography.